Thank you very much, Cyrus. Cyrus, you have done a phenomenal job emceeing this event. That is just incredible, incredible. So ladies and gentlemen, this is, uh, this is very exciting. I would urge those of you, you know who you are, you're watching from another room. You shouldn't do that. You should come into this room. If you are in another room, do you hear me? You're on your laptop, hi. You should come into this room because this is very exciting and it's very important. Will and I <laughs> have done something insane for the last few years. We, despite our massively busy schedules, decide to take hours and hours out of our lives at an extremely low ROI. Avinash would be ashamed of our return on, on investment to give these head-to-head -head talks. And uh, this one in particular, I'm, I'm pretty excited about. So in, in uh, Boston, it was, last round, uh, I, did a, I did a series where I stole a lot of content from other people's websites and I showed off how you could build something remarkable and something amazing on the web by taking these ideas from other places. And so we decided to turn that into a full-fledged presentation and that's what I'm gonna present, that's what Will's gonna present and at the end you're gonna vote and tell us who gave the best presentation and the person with the best presentation has the loser by him and his wife dinner at a spectacularly expensive restaurant. Phenomenally expensive. So I believe this round, uh, if, if, I, if I lose, I'm buying Will and Heather dinner at the Herb Farm here in Seattle, which is like $350 a head. Whew. So let's not lose, because my bank account is, how much do we have, honey? Yeah. Like $22,000 is, is in there right now. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's begin. First thing you should do is go to that URL, because I have not put URLs into any of these slides. I didn't want to overlap any of the pretty pictures that I'm going to show you. So in order to get the URLs and find the places where all this cool stuff is coming from, you're going to need that URL, mz.cm slash faceoff2011. And I'm using, boy, this doesn't work. It's going to make things pretty hard. Let's try the one that doesn't say Mac on it. So why is it that everything has to be shared? Why? Why do we need this? It seems annoying. It seems like I just want to build some links, man. I just want to stuff some keywords. I want to con some old lady. That's not how SEO is played, by the way, Avinash. Fire voting. Mm -mm. That's not SEO, man. It has to be shared because shares today equal reach. Look how many services have millions of users. How many social services have millions of users. That's incredible. Have you seen this? The Google plus one right in the search results? Shares equal clicks. Shares are social proof. Shares make me want to click the result more. And today, shares equal rankings. I would rather have a massive social network that reached everyone in the SEO field than rank number one for my top 20 keywords. Because if I do, all I have to do is tweet or share it on LinkedIn or link to it on Quora or Facebook and Google will put it up there for my network. My social is my SEO. How's Google doing that? That's crazy. In fact, it gets really crazy. I don't know if any of you, any of you saw the link I tweeted earlier today, but t take a look at this. So I'm connected to Kalina Jordan on, on Facebook? I, I heard Matt Cutts not a half mile away from here in June say, Google doesn't use any data from Facebook. Google doesn't get any data from Facebook. They don't sign the open graph agreement. They're not licensing that out. So how am I connected to Kalina on Facebook? Whoa. If you check out that URL, you'll see they are digging deep. Do you see that connection? 
right? I follow Danny Sullivan on friend feed, oh, which links to Kalina on friend feed, and Kalina on friend feed links to her on Delicious, which links to her on Twitter, which links to her on askkalina.com, which links to her on LinkedIn. The connection network to get to Facebook through this social system is massive. Google is digging so deep. So your social network means higher rankings. So the question is obvious, and so is the answer. But I look at search results all the time. I bet you do, too. You look at a search result, you say to yourself, what? what? I can't imagine myself linking, sharing any of those. Seems a little depressing. I smell opportunity. I think that's the best kind of search result in the world to tackle. Because these people can't get creative enough. They can't think big enough. They can't think sharing. That's what we all have to think. Some people are doing it wrong. They just are. They're not, uh, not playing the game. They're con and old ladies. You see this site. I, I mean, I see this site, and I think to myself, I, I read a little bit of headlines. I'm sort of like, OK, 11 guidelines for increased focus power. Theory is cheap. Reality is expensive. These aren't bad headlines. In fact, the articles even, aren't even that terrible. But what is it about this that makes me make that bet? You just look. You can feel it. You have the SEO sixth sense. You're like, oh, you are so panda burned. I haven't even checked, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they're panda burned. Or they're going to be. I saw this the other day. Someone was tweeting it out. It actually was on Hacker News. This, this blog post was on Hacker News. Uh, and the, so I, I was reading this, and I thought to myself, wait a minute. those. Those aren't even the top 20 most populous cities in the world. That data is wrong. It's not the correct. So I clicked on the About page, and oh, come on. Really? This is not even a blog. You're not doing it right. I, I don't want to call Christy out, but Christy mentioned Mashable the other day, and I was like, oh, man, she's stealing my thunder. But she was like, oh, you know, they, make, they put the sharing front and center, and they do. They put the sharing front and center. Like, there are 18 sharing buttons above the fold on Mashable. There's like another 20 below. Like, oh, uh, uh, really? Is that? And, and Mashable's going to do well anyway because of their content. But, but if they A-B tested the way OKCupid okay A-B tests, they'd have the scroll down, right? Mint, I love Mint. They do great infographics. But why is this a graphic? What? This, this is worse as a graphic than it would be as text. It's just on a background of little dollar signs. I don't, I don't need little dollar signs on my background to give me text. I can read text on plain backgrounds. But there it is, and it's huge, massive. This is ranking number one currently if you're not uh, targeting, if you're not tagged as being local, this is ranking number one when I search for mattresses. And uh, this is not the worst thing in the world, but there's no way it's share worthy. It's just a list. It doesn't help me at all. It's not useful. It's not worth sharing. So let's do this right. Let's get this solid. What I want to give you here is a framework so that when you go home, when you sit at your desk, when you are brainstorming content, when you're judging content, when you're analyzing a content strategy, you can say, oh, you know what? None of Rand's 10 things are represented well in the content strategy that I've got. I'm going back to the drawing table. Six, I'm sorry, seven of these come from the science of influence. If you haven't read Persuasion by Dr. Robert Cialdini, I, I highly recommend it. And three of them I completely made up, but I'll claim they're science anyway. Uh, no, I won't. But they are very useful on the web for sharing. First one is reciprocation. I give you something, I do something for you, and you will do something for me in return. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It happens everywhere. Look, here's the Ad Age Power 150. And here is the Ad Age Power 150 badge. 
It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's remarkable. And <laughs> SEO Moz is the only one in the top 20 that doesn't link back to the AdAge Power 150 list with the badge. <laughs> so I, I know they're doing something nice for me, but I just I play the game too much. I know the game. This works very, very well. You saw uh, Tony talk about the Spoonback program and how well that works in reciprocation. Here's the Seattle 2.0 list, which, which I have linked to several times, mostly to point out some inaccuracies to Mar Marcelo, but that's beside the point. The idea here is simple, right? I craft a list of the top people, the top things, the top places, the top sites, the top Twitter accounts, I don't care what, and they will link to me. They will. But I have a better idea, an even better way to use reciprocation, a better way to do something for the people that you really want to link from, because sometimes it's hard to build these top lists and get them. But this is, this is like cheating. It's so simple. If you go and you customize the badge to fit the users, the, the, the person that you're trying to get to link to use web design, right, to get it to match their look and feel, it will link to you every time. You customized the badge for them. You made it look like their site. You went out of your way to reciprocate for them, and they will do the same for you. I love what Shutterstock does. Shutterstock emailed us uh, maybe six months ago and said, hey, Moz, would you like a free Shutterstock account? You can use the graphics in your blog posts. You can use them in your presentations, and the account is free. And all we ask is when you put them online, you link back to us. Oh, incredible. Incredible, right? They just contacted the right people. Of course I need a Shutterstock account. You should be doing this. I should be doing this. There's genius crowds. And the idea is so simple. The concept is so simple. It's that the user, the user is going to create content, the idea, the product that lives on the site. And so they now have an incentive and they have a reciprocation, they have an obligation that they feel deep, psychologically deep in their minds, that they need to give back to it, and they will help you promote it. And there's nothing more obvious than the Creative Commons for this. It's all about reciprocation. So the second one is commitment and consistency. If I tell you that I am a passionate vegetarian, that I will not eat meat, but I, I just, I simply won't do it. I think it's wrong, or I, I have health reasons for doing it. Once I, I commit to that ideal, that ethic, then I have a very, very strong incentive, particularly if I've publicized it, to live up to that. If someone knows that I'm a vegetarian, then I'm not going to eat meat, right? There's, there's this, this principle, and that consistency drives action. This is Kiva, and they have a brilliant use of consistency and commitment. Because once you give a donation and it goes back into your fund, the immediate thing they say is, well, thank you for being such a generous person, and here's your profile, and it's been posted, and now there's publicity around you sharing dollars on the web, right? And so, you know, I, I gave some money to someone in Honduras, and then I got it back, and I'm going to Peru later uh, this summer, and so I donated to someone in Peru, and the money recycles itself. It's brilliant. It's created commitment and consistency. Here's Threadless, where you design the t-shirt, where you make the product. And so, of course, when you've made it, you're going to promote it, right? That, that principle of, oh, I, I have a commitment. I, I have to maintain consistency. I gave them something. And they do it even better than that, even more simply. Because I know many of you are thinking, I can't have someone create my content, right? I'm an e-commerce store. I'm a, 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 a real estate site. I can't do this. But you can have people rate. And when people rate, if people rate highly, they ask them to share. Of course you're going to share. This is a 61. It's a Y Combinator startup. It's one of my favorite music sites. And they do this brilliantly. Here's a song that I gave a heart to. I, I said, I like this song. Right? And so they email me and say, hey, that song has been revived to the home page. Won't you come listen to it again? Won't you come share it? Won't you come? encourage it, and when I do that, I get more hearts that I can do. Like, they give me the power and the responsibility of making the share happen. And there's no better way to do this. Absolutely no better way. 
And probably not a better actionable tip that I can give, although I have one pretty awesome one coming up, uh, than to start an email list. So this is the, the SEO Moz bloggers list, right? And Tom is emailing saying, hey, guys, I just, I had this, this thing on AppSumo, I did a video for them, will you please help distribute this? And if I've got some time, yeah, I'm gonna tweet it for Tom, right? We've built a list, we've built that commitment and consistency around that list of we'll share each other's stuff on occasion. And the list is not used very often for this, but when it is, there you go. If you do this, you build it with three people and then you find somebody else, you add a fourth, you add a fifth, you find them at, people, at conferences like this, you find them at meetups, you will win at sharing. It will be awesome. The power of that, of that seed, that first spark, is incredible. Social proof. It's very simple, but, but there's, some, there's some great ways to do it, too. So this is a Twitter comparison by Visually. It's visua.ly. It's pretty good, right? Like, I didn't customize, I just, I just chose the beard and the hair. My hair's not, it needs to be a little more spiky. But Will looks pretty solid. <laughs> he outweighs me by a little bit. But you, you can see that this, this customization, the social proof is in the fact that, that you've done it personally, right? That, and that when I share this, when I tweet this, right, which, I, which is part of the, the visually process, then it gets shared by other people because it's been proven by the people that you follow, by the people you're connected to, that that's the thing to do. There's really simple ones. For anyone who's selling something on the web, I, I can't tell you how few sites use this principle from Amazon, right, that, oh, you know, customers who bought this also bought and other customers uh, viewed these things after viewing this item, right? So even if you're not gonna make the purchase, you can do that, and it's, it's super powerful, especially if you can combine it with what um, uh, Matt Brown and some of the other guys were talking about where you actually connect these up, Adam Audette this morning, right? Where you make it indexable. My God, all the recommendation engines, not indexable. And social proof is powerful because of the company that you keep. This is tech meme. Right? And Tech Meme's site has a little job board on the right-hand side. I can't tell you how much I want to be part of that. Now, the, the cost, the ROI is not there. But I really want to be on the list because look who's on the list. I've seen a lot of smart sites do this where they create those relationships beforehand, before they launch a product, so that they've got someone, even if they're not paying them the full price. Right? They don't have to pay the full price up front. You just have to have the relationship going. You just have to list it up there. And then everybody else will want to be in that same company. That's the power of social proof. There's the easy social proof, right? There's the, here's this, you know, this guy. I don't know why they think an SEO guy is going to help them sell Trunkly. I, I think they should probably get someone maybe with a little more wider reach. But certainly the New York Times is going to help them, right? And Next Web is going to help them. So there's that, there's that social proof created simply. And what I like in, in this feature and format that so many people miss is that it has to be recognizable. When you do social proof and you don't recognize the people, when, when uh, I'm sorry, when Matt Clayton was just up here talking about why the face pile works, it's because you know those people, because Facebook knows you're connected to those people. And the same thing is true anywhere else on the web. You want to have people that you know are going to have those connections. Liking. So I, this is a tough one, but what Cialdini suggests is that we are persuaded by people and things that we like. So I like Attack of Design. I think it's a great blog. And when he shares something, I will often share it, right? And I like Joanna, and I like Gianluca. And so when they create those things, and how do you do this? How do you create that liking? It's hard. It's hard, be, but you, if, if you've seen the video from, from Simon Sinek, how many people have seen this TED video from Simon? Oh, no, only a few. Boy, you know, you're going to watch this. He's going to kick Will and I's ass. So he's up the, he'll be up there with Avinash's presentation. It's amazing. It's a great TED talk. Very, very important for marketers. So Simon said that the reason that people buy is not 
because they're buying what you do. They're buying why you do it. They buy it because they like you. And you see, I mean, I, I do insane things. I flew back from Sao Paulo on uh, Monday, midday, and then I got to the office and I had a bunch of meetings and this started on Wednesday and I'm gonna have to be in New York uh, like a week from now. And I'm, <laughs> Ava, she's adorable. Uh, so, and, and in order to make that all happen, right, like I'm not selling SEO moz. You, you will almost never see me get up on a stage and say, this is what SEO moz does and you know, it's awesome and cool and you should buy it. What I'll say is you should do inbound marketing because it just makes sense, because it's awesome, because the power of it is amazing. And then people will buy because they, they buy what we do, right? They buy that, that that's a good thing to do. There's no better way to do this than to hang out in real life. Nothing beats it. There's no way to achieve liking better than to be there in person. But if you have to cheat, follower wonk's quite good for that. I think follower wonk's been talked about, so I, I won't go into that. Authority. This is See Your Impact. They're a great nonprofit here in Seattle. I, I, I urge you to check them out and tweet them and, and donate to them. And one of the most powerful things that they've got going for them is that Apollo Ono, who my wife almost dated, luckily I, I like jumped in right before that, uh, Apollo Ono, he's got, I don't know why you liked him. I mean, he has that little, and he's kind of short, and yeah, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Apollo Ono is, is featured on their webpage. He talked about them on CNN. I remember I was flying through an airport. I'm like, oh my God, he's talking about Seer Impact. That's so, so cool. And authority is a powerful thing. We associate with authority. Celebrity in this country has a power. But I don't, it depends on how you use it. So here's, uh, here's Yummy Tummy. Um, which I, I don't know the quality of the women's undergarments that they sell. They also have men's undergarments, but I wasn't, I'm very comfortable in my boxers or whatnot. So uh, they've got all the people who featured them, all the people who've talked about them, and that, that works, right? That's, that's somewhat powerful. That's suggestive, like, okay, well, this is one of Oprah's favorite things, so maybe I should get that. But one of the best ways that I've found to leverage authority Two of the best ways, the first one. One of the best ways is to take what other people have done, what other people have said is authoritative, that they already believe because they trust the source, they believe the source, and turn it into something amazing. This is snake oil from Information is Beautiful. It's a very, very fine infographic. I commend them for it. And what it does is it shows, based on the, the diligence and the number of studies around a particular uh, medical substance or, or a, a vitamin or something that's supposed to help you to get better, how effective it actually is. Some things are not so effective. I was, I was shocked to see that all the acai berries that I've been eating aren't helping me that much, um, which I, I probably should have realized uh, earlier. And you can leverage the same thing to take experts and turn it into content. Ask for simple things from experts, some votes, some contributions, some lines of text, maybe even a survey, and awesome things will come from it. Because all those experts will be invested in that sharing as well. And the authority of those experts transfers over to the brand. Do you remember the first time we did this in 2005? Nobody knew who SEO Moz was. It's a weird name, I've never heard of them, I don't know those guys, but we put this out and we had people that they did recognize, Danny Sullivan and Aaron Wall, right, and Bill Slosky, and oh, well, if these people are contributing, then they must be authoritative. Such an easy way to create such awesome content. There's not very much of some things. Jamie was talking about the other day uh, how the only two companies that have a larger market cap than Apple uh, are oil companies, right, because Oil is scarce and in high demand. And scarcity is very, very powerful. It's powerful to talk about, it's powerful to think about, it's powerful to blog about, and it's powerful to have in your products. Here's Neil talking about his uh, American Express Centurion card, right? So you have to spend, I think you have to spend a million dollars a year with American Express. And Neil was like 19 years old at the time that he did this, so very, very impressive, right? And this, this blog post is just, just went huge spiked up because the scarcity of the American Express Centurion card 
is impressive. In fact, I heard, that, I don't know if this is true, that American Express loses money on every Centurion card, like a lot of money, but they do it because the branding creates so much value for them. Dribble was talked about earlier. I think uh, Ian Lurie mentioned it. And it is an amazing place to find design, but the reason it's so high quality, the reason it's beating so many of the other CSS portals is because of scarcity because they won't let you in unless you get an invite from another member, and then you have to work your way up the player's field. Right? They've got like this basketball analogy going, and, and you have to get into the big leagues to be able to show your stuff on the home page and all that kind of thing. The power of scarcity has driven demand for the site, has driven contributions to the site, content, links, everything. When you see a web designer site, what's amazing about it is they don't just put Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, they put Dribbble. But they'll have the little basketball as one of the symbols on nearly every one of those sites. I think, I think this will be in the top, uh, top 500 most linked to sites uh, in the next year or two. Quite amazing. <laughs> and Google did this too, right? I don't know if you can quite see it there, but uh, that is a million dollars. Buy it now for a Google Plus invite. It's, uh, I bet a lot of you would sell for that price. <laughs> Namesake did this. Namesake had an invite-only system. They had a closed beta. Whenever you have those closed betas, you create demand, extra demand, that comes from the scarcity of it. And sharing is very powerful when it is in scarce supply. Woot built a brilliant business on this. You guys are all familiar with Woot? The one deal a day, when, they, when it's sold out, it's sold out. You never know what's going to be there the next day. Lots of scarcity. And in fact, brilliant scarcity in one thing that we can all use very simply. Time. Time. Do you remember when OpenSight Explorer first launched? For the first two days, the first 48 hours, there was a little countdown clock at the top. And you could use all the features of it for free. And that's a very easy thing to do, right? To give away your product for a very brief amount of time, to make a contest last a brief amount of time, and to drive up spikes in demand and in sharing and in attention. Timeliness. It pays to do the right thing at the right time to get the right shares. Find people on Plus. This was, this was outed a little bit earlier. But what was phenomenal is it came out Two days, two days after Google Plus launched. Absolutely incredible. And brilliant, too. And it barely worked, and it was like kind of junky, and it, it couldn't really handle load, and it was down for a bunch of hours. It didn't matter, right? Like, they got it out at the right time. This is a graphic, an infographic that appeared on Mashable. It was built by a couple of geniuses who asked about whether we ha are still in a tech bubble. And they sort of showed the history of this tech bubble. Right? You can see the link from the page that I shared earlier. They, and what's great is there's a conversation happening around that. They know that by releasing this, they're going to get dozens to hundreds of people talking about it and linking to it. I think there was probably a, a dozen major tech blogs that referenced it within the next 48 hours after the infographic came out, which is phenomenal. Perfect timing. Here's another one. So that's Stack. That stack you can see right there that's dwarfing the Statue of Liberty, uh, that is a small portion of the United States' debt in cash stacked on pallets. And they walk through this in the infographic. It's, it's quite phenomenal. And it's perfect timing, too, right? Because there's all this talk of, oh, something might default on the debt, and then maybe something bad will happen, but maybe it'll be just fine, and we'll just keep going anyway. Timing. Perfect. Timing. I thought you guys would appreciate this one in particular. This talks about the new, potentially new, Google layout. Right? Anytime Google comes out with something new and someone puts it up, it gets a ton of attention. And I'll, I'll actually show you this cleaner layout. So it's right, it's right there, which is, it is cleaner, but it's, uh, it's odd. I wonder if it'll work. I'm not sure whether they're actually going to roll this out or not. It sort of has that, like, too minimalist to even have design. We'll see. We'll see. What's smart is catching it before it goes. Novelty. Some things are simply very unique. And in their uniqueness, they earn massive sharing. 
This is Campaign Monitor. They are in a massively competitive field, insanely competitive field, email marketing software. Like, there's 20 companies all with you know, millions of dollars of revenue, all trying to get the uh, lowest cost per acquisition and the highest customer lifetime value. Very, very challenging. And Worldview is actually quite brilliant. Because what Worldview does is it, it, it creates a new product that says, you know what, we're not going to tie emails just to their email address. We're going to tie your email subscribers to who they actually are. This product looks pretty badass, I have to say. Like, as a marketer, oh my god, you're not just telling me, you know, 87743 Charles at gmail.com. You're telling me, oh, that's, you know, Charles McRoy, and he's based in the Philippines, and he does this and this and this, and here's his Twitter. Wow, that's cool. This is Andy Rutledge's News Redux. Any of you see this? Anybody already see this? No? Only a few people? Okay. Uh, so, what Andy did is he, he it's a brilliant, brilliant use of a, a designer. He took the New York Times and he went through and said, oh, Wow, you know, this is, this is the New York Times' navigation. There's world, US politics, New York, business, deal book, technology, sports, science, health, options, art, books, movies, music, television, theater, style, dining, and wine, fashion, style, home and garden, weddings, travel. Holy cow, and it's still going. Cripes, who needs all of this? Right, and then he, then he showed like a beautiful, gorgeous redesign. It got tons of links and attention. And then it got like a, an, a whole other post where people were saying, but the New York Times already has this other beautiful thing that they use for the iPad, and you can get it online too, and all this kind of stuff. Generates tons of attention because it's unique, like foodily. So I, after Matt Brown's talk on Wednesday, I was thinking to myself, my God, that structured data, it's so hard to use. It's so hard to figure out how to use that structured data in cool ways. And then I found foodily, and I was like, oh my God. I get it. I get how structured data can be used in unique ways to make beautiful, fantastic things. This is all content from other places, other websites, but it's one of the best recipe browsing sites I've ever found. And it's not the content that made it unique, it's the presentation. This is the Doggleganger, which was set up by Pedigree in New Zealand. And you can see I uploaded my photo, and then it, it doggleganged me to this fine fellow here who I will admit is adorable. In fact, Geraldine came over to the computer last night and was looking at it, and she's like, oh my god, he's so cute. We have to get him for five minutes, because he's going to smell, and it'll be hairy, and he'll leave poop everywhere. And OK, we'll, just see, we'll leave him online. But what's brilliant about it is it, it matches up humans, based on a photo that you upload, which is relatively arbitrary, with a dog that's in a pound that needs a home in New Zealand. It's brilliant. It's unique. I bet people think, ah, oh, pet food, eh, kind of boring. Not so boring. Curiosity, there are questions that demand an answer that we all have, and they create awesome sharing potential. I'll show you. This is the global rich list. And the global rich list allows me to enter my salary, uh, which is currently, I think my salary is like $22,000 and some odd, I, I make more money than that actually, but my, my salary, like my, my salary from SEO Muslim, I cut my checks annually, is like $20, $22,000, right? And so you can see there that despite, even if I were only making that $22,000, that I would be the 637 millionth richest person in the world, which would put me in the top 10.62%, right? Which is pretty damn good, and then it sort of talks about these things. Now, granted, it has a, a very crappy background, but it answers a very, Excellent question, a question that we're all curious about, insanely curious. <laughs> What's great about this site, about where is this, is that it did not launch as where is this. It launched as where the fuck is this? That was the domain name. And then, and then they had so much success with it that they were like, whoa, 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 this is getting big. And no one will link to it because it has the word fuck in the domain name. <laughs> so I'm sure the guys were sitting around there like, oh, this is awesome. Oh, fuck. Let's redirect it. <laughs> so they redirected it to where is this? And people upload their photos, and then groups rate the photos and do this. They say, oh, that gorgeous photo, that is from Norway. And here it is right on the map. And here are all the people who are saying, yes, that's where it is. Super cool. Answers this curiosity thing. The fact that a, somebody in travel, <clears throat> Eitan, should buy this like tomorrow before they get any more traffic and get any more expensive. How about the top 20 most expensive AdWords? This was from WordStream. 
beautiful infographic, answers a super interesting question, and actually was one of the only times that an SEO site has ever made it to the top of Hacker News. Woo, that's a lot of sharing. The science behind traffic jams. I am totally curious, what is it that makes people in Seattle go 20 miles an hour slower than everybody else, right? We have like the third worst traffic in the country and the second worst uh, per capita because we have tons of roads and there's only 500,000 of us and yet our traffic is terrible. So of course I'm curious about this. I think anyone who's ever been in traffic is curious about this. And they explain it in this handy infographic. Awesome. I was always curious. Now I'm going to share. The last one, one of the most important ones, is usefulness. Something that is actually useful to me. Like the screws encyclopedia from Just Paste It. So simple, so essential when you have to get a bloody screw into the wall and you don't know which one is the right one and essential, absolutely useful and, and simple as heck. This is shoe fitter. It solves a problem all of us have when we try to buy shoes online, which is what is my size in that brand? That shoe looks very nice. It is at a very good price. I would like to buy it, but I don't know which size I am, and I'm not going to buy three sizes around it and have them all shipped to me and send it, then send two back, so I'm just going to give up on the transaction. And so Shoe Fitter takes your size in one brand and translates that to all the other brands. It is bad ass. Awesome, super useful, worthy of being shared. This is Hipmunk for travel search. Has anyone in here ever used Hipmunk? Awesome. Look, it's already getting penetration. It's only what, like seven months old, six or seven months old? So Hipmunk makes it so that you can see which flights are painful and pain free. And for those of you who have 20 or 30 extra dollars to spend or 50 extra dollars to spend on a flight, particularly if you're doing corporate travel, you want less pain in your flights and Hipmunk will help you find those. And finally, this. This was the best I could find in terms of mattress sites that are useful. I went through the top uh, nine pages of Google results, so I guess that, that's up to result 99. This was the best I could find. It's on, it was ranked on page four. It's US mattresses, and it does help me segment. It helps me search by brand, or by style, or by comfort level, or by size, or whatever I need, and it, it doesn't present it beautifully. This is what I'm talking about. This is opportunity. If you take the last 85 slides that I've just gone through and you apply those lessons, you're going to win in one of these. You're going to win because people will share it more, and sharing is what's going to matter in the short term and in the long term. Everything, everything is share worthy. And every marketing task that we have gets so much easier when you have something that is worth sharing. I promise, I promise you can do it. Let's get a high five. Power can't get Tittles back. There's nothing we can do about that. But we can get you your money back with our money back specials. Check them out before you bet at paddypower.com. That was the most complained about advert in the UK last year. Uh, Paddy Power, a gaming company, a, a betting, sports betting company, uh, and they, they run this kind of controversial advertising campaign, pretty much as far as I can tell, with the explicit goal of just getting banned, getting, getting thrown off the air. And uh, that's kind of the angle that I'm coming from uh, today. So still this presentation, it's, uh, it, it's Rand's topic, it's Rand's hometown, I've got to fight dirty, right? I've never won in America. He, uh, he, he chose this topic. It's a topic he's, he's excellent at presenting on, as you've just seen. I have a crap load of examples. I'm going to have to go through them really fast. And I don't care whether people who aren't here like what I'm going to say. So you don't have to tweet it. You don't have to do all that kind of stuff. Shut your laptops down. I'm just gonna, you're going to have to watch because I'm going fast uh, in order to fit it in. And 
Rand has done all of the preamble for me. So you can just slot all of my stuff into the why and the how and the, you know, this gives you this kind of thing and this gives you the uh, uh, reciprocation and this gives you the authenticity and this gives you all those other things. Uh, I'm just gonna give you a load of examples and I'm hoping some of them are, are things you haven't seen before. There is a difference between bad and evil, okay? What I'm talking about here is a kind of playful naughtiness, right? That ad is not really offensive, really. Like, who actually complains? Who cares? It's just funny, mainly, right? Uh, but, but you can see why it's offensive, in quotes. And, and that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about here. I, I want everybody to be a little bit edgier with their marketing. What Paul Graham calls naughty. Um, famously, Y Combinator uh, looked for this naughtiness in their company founders. And they, they mean kind of rule benders, I guess. You know, pe people who will just go right to the edges of, of what's acceptable and what's allowed. And uh, that's what I'm, I'm hoping uh, to, to get out of here. And the presentation's in two halves. I say halves. The first one's like 28 minutes long, so um, I'm going to have to go very fast. But first, first half is this steel generally. This is, the first half is, is things that you can take inspiration from. It's things that you can um, repurpose, maybe. You, know, you, can, you can just see them and you can think, yes, I can, I can apply that to my company or my client like this. The second half, I wanted to make sure there was some directly actionable stuff. So the second half has a bunch of things that you can just lift and put down. All right, let's go. So some general ideas. Who here has heard of Banksy? Actually, let's scratch that. Who has not heard of Banksy? Good. Because the other thing I'm, I'm kind of banking on is that I've got a bunch of examples from outside of the US. And I'm hoping that, you know, again, as I said, I've got to fight dirty. You've all heard of Hipmunk, right? You've all heard of those things. I'm going to bring you some stuff you haven't seen. So Banksy's a graffiti artist. And he epitomizes this kind of naughtiness. I guess what well, graffiti kind of does anyway, but it's things like this. He, he sees real-world situations, and he sees ways to make them uh, either interesting, funny, amusing, or to make a political point. And he just sees them in ways that, uh, he sees imperfections. So here, the, the kind of the, the bit of brickwork you could see was already there, and he puts the stencil in place that makes it look like somebody's brushing something under the carpet. Um, he, he does light-hearted, amusing things. He does serious points or kind of political points. This is obviously, uh, so, so the white line was already there, and he just drew the policeman. And, uh, and the stain was already there on the wall, and he decided to be a little bit irreverent. And I want to see more of this in what you guys all get up to. You seen this? This was a, a magazine ad that, uh, that BMW ran congratulating Audi. So it says, congratulations to Audi for winning South African Car of the Year from the winner of World Car of the Year. <laughs> Do this, right? Take the piss out of your competitors. Because then maybe they'll come right back at you. Congratulations to BMW <laughs> for winning World Car of the Year from the winner of all these races. We make fast cars. We make good cars, right? Brilliant. In fact. Not a, at, Audi kind of, I think, uh, kicked a hornet's nest here a little bit because Audi actually ran a worldwide advertising campaign, tens of millions of dollars of budget when they launched the A4. Your move, BMW. Now, the thing I love about this is, or the thing I'm about to show you, so this, this is run by Audi Central Marketing, right? They, they, like I said, they spent... Tens of millions of dollars, I have no idea what they spent. Must have been tens of millions of dollars on this. This is run not just nationwide, this is worldwide. This, this particular one is in, uh, is in Santa Monica. Which gave the opportunity for this. But, but, the cool thing here is this is not a BMW advert. Well, I mean, it is an advert for BMW. But this is an advert run by a BMW dealership. Just one dealership. Right? There's only one of these billboards, but it's right across the street from that one. And that one costs tens of millions of dollars. This one costs like $5,000. And then gets shared online, and you know, these guys do brilliantly out of that. I love it. This is just on top of their roof. On, on the dealership put it on their own roof. 
Uh, if you've seen the previous Audi BMW kind of fight, you may have also seen uh, this. This is supposedly the Bentley chairman. Um, this is Bentley's response to uh, the Audi and BMW ads. This is, of course, fake, <laughs> right? Bentley did not give them the finger. But the car website that put together the Audi ad, the BMW ad, and mocked this up, this got shared like crazy. So a whole bunch of different ideas in there. I'm just going to, another thing I'm going to do is I'm not gonna necessarily going to tell you guys how to use all these things. You're all smart people. This is an advanced conference. Um, I'm just going to get on with the ideas and hope that some of them stick. I don't know if this one's fake. Uh, it, you remember right at the beginning of the conference, we were talking about retargeting and where embarrassing places that display ads can show up. We saw Rand in his lumberjack shirt on, uh, on a dating website. This is an advert for a Norwegian um, uh, hair dye product. And, uh, and it appeared there. <laughs> and I, I actually don't know, but what I really, really hope, I really hope that this is actually fake and that it's all just promotion for these guys. Because that's what I would do, right? I would, I would get together with my advertisers, and I would say, we're going to make it look like this happened accidentally. Because the internet's going to go crazy. Do that. You seen this, moat.com? You put in a brand, and it shows you all of the display ads they run across the web. So they've, they're like crawling ad networks, I guess. And uh, this is for Google. You'll recognize some of these ads. It's really cool, actually. Uh, you try it out. You, uh, you can use some ones I, I know that are particularly cool. Uh, try out Intel, uh, Rackspace, Starbucks. There's some, uh, so, some really cool stuff. You can, take this, you can use this either for inspiration, or I guess you can use it just for competitor research, just see what they're up to. Briefly on the uh, having fun with your competitors. Obviously, you can have even more fun if it's a business partner that you're working with, and, and you know, you're kind of in concert rather than in competition. This is the announcement of, um, so you've heard of T-Mobile. They're, they're a, a, a network here. Orange are another network in the UK. And they, they, actually, Orange have a history of doing this kind of advertising where they don't even put their logo or their brand name on it, but they just use their font and their color. And everybody knows who it is. In fact, when they launched, they only used their strap line, which was the future's bright. They just, they just ran wall-to-wall -wall advertising across the UK the future's bright. And then on launch day, it was the future's bright, the future's orange. Um, but because they've, they've got a history of doing that, and uh, to what Jamie was saying in his, his branding, presenta branding presentation, I think it's amazing. This is something that we should all be aspiring to. I'm not really a brand marketer, but I want to learn about this stuff because I think this is the future, and it's so crucially important. But anyway, so to the point, uh, you, you guys probably recognize the pink and white, right, the T-Mobile colors. Uh, these guys did a deal where their users could roam onto each other's networks. And they announced it by doing a series of these billboards next to each other. And these changed every day. And there was a whole story told through them. And so if you commuted, you saw this every day on your way to work. You saw it change every day. And uh, it was really clever. And then they turned it into a TV ad where they sped it all up. And you saw it at high speed. Very cool. You see this? Hip chat. Um, you, should, you should read the story about this. Uh, they, they did this really cheaply because they waited until, they, they did a deal where they said, when somebody pulls out at the last minute and you've got some spare inventory, we will take that with hours of notice. And they, they managed to pull together this advert in, in no time. Um, why you no, no use HipChat? And by using the angry Reddit man, they firstly kind of talked to their target audience, the people who use social media tools in business. But they also get a secondary benefit, that they've spent whatever it is, a few thousand dollars on doing this. And then, of course, it gets shared crazily across the web. So they actually, those are the things that drive sign-ups and drive conversions, back to the stuff that uh, Avinash was talking about. On a much smaller scale, combine online and offline in, in other ways. So uh, I often evangelize Gecko Board at conferences. I love, the, love the, their service. Um, it's not really relevant to what we're talking about today, except that I evangelize it, then people tweet at Will Critchlow, recommends at Gecko Board. And they see that, they saw that for a while, and then they, uh, they just one day sent me a t-shirt. They just got, got in touch out of the blue and said, hey, thank you. And uh, I think this, actually you talked about this before, but you didn't mention it in your presentation today. 
is the insane value of unexpected rewards. Um, that somehow humans are wired to much, much prefer even very small unexpected rewards over much, much bigger earned rewards, if you like. Um, and you know, this is more valuable than a paid package, which would have been worth hundreds of dollars. Uh, this, is, this is just cool, right? And it's the same reason, incidentally, why if you have employees, you should make sure that you go out of your way to do unexpected stuff. Don't just have the bonus that they work towards and they know what the targets are, and if they hit those targets, they get the bonus. Don't do, you know, also, if somebody does something cool, buy them a Starbucks or you know, whatever. And it could be really small, but it's, that, it's, the, it's the gesture and the act. MailChimp did this as well. They sent me a T-shirt. I mainly just have T-shirts of uh, software as a service companies. Uh, I've got a new Moz one now. Uh, they sent me a T-shirt as well, but they also do other cool stuff. Have you seen their API incentivization? They announced a million dollar fund, one million dollars, a million dollar fund uh, to fund startups who are building things on their API. This is genius because, well, for a start, these guys are actually, I think they have now taken some funding, but they're essentially bootstrapped, right? They, um, they're a, a profitable small business and they don't probably have a million dollars to just splash around like this. But they announced it because they're giving this out in $5,000 here, $10,000 there. It's probably going to cost them, I don't know, $100,000 in the first year, but the fund is a million dollars. So that's the PR headline, right? Get some coverage. But it's, it's a brilliant thing to do because every time, they're not spending that money, they're investing that money into the ecosystem that supports their product. And all those people that they invest are then going to go and tell the world about it. And you can't use it unless you've got a MailChimp account, which is brilliant. So yeah, you should do this. I keep, t I keep saying, when's the SEO Moz integration fund coming along? Use the news. Rand talked about the news. Uh, the first kind of news is news that you know is coming, right? We knew that Will and Kate were getting married, right? The royal wedding. I think that made the news over here. Uh, so yeah, so make a pizza with them on it. I don't know. but. Th Crazily, and this is why I don't really get some of this stuff, this is the kind of thing that mainstream press picks up. This is PR worthy somehow, uh, and that's why I'm not a PR expert. There's another kind of news, which is when news breaks, like just out of the blue, boom. Who's, uh, have you guys heard of super injunctions? Hands up if you know what a super injunction is. All the Brits. Okay, uh, so in the UK we have slightly different privacy and freedom of speech laws than you do over here. And it turns out that some rich, famous, powerful people were abusing those laws to keep details of their marital transgressions secret and out of the press. That would never happen over here, right? Rich, famous people abusing the law for their own purposes? That, I don't think that, that's, that, that sounds very un-American to me. Um, So what they were using was this, this legal tool called a super injunction. And a super injunction is basically, uh, so a normal injunction is when you tell somebody they can't talk about something, or the, a court tells somebody they can't talk about something. A super injunction says, and you also can't report on the existence of the injunction. And it's a very insidious form of kind of media manipulation because if the media can't report on this thing, then nobody even knows there's a thing to be upset about. But so the point was, anyway, the, the, there was some, um, most of them were soccer players. And, most of them were sleeping with their brother's wife or whatever. Paddy Power, the guys who kicked the cat at the beginning, I, yeah, anyway, um, built this website really, really quickly, which was a spoof website where you could put in a friend's name, I put in Rand Fishkin, and it would make a fake web page that announced that they were somehow tied into this super injunction story. Because the thing with the super injunction, of course, is it applies to all the newspapers, but who's going to stop people talking about it on Twitter? Turns out there's kind of a flaw in the system and the law's gonna change, and whatever. But, uh, so everybody online knew all, who all these people were. The story was breaking online. But this made, meant that you could really quickly put together a kind of plausible looking page. And the thing I love about this is this is a flash video. And they've even pulled in here, Rand Fishkin, into the flash video. It's really clever. Um, and so you could send this around to your friends and it, it, was, uh, it was really funny. Completely different topic. Um, code is content. Hat tip to, uh, you guys know Damesh Shah at HubSpot? Um, he, he talked about code is content at our Boston conference. It's just like text or images or video. Code gets links. Code gets shared. 
increasingly code gets shared, right? GitHub makes it really easy to share code. My point here actually isn't, uh, isn't the sharing code. It's, it's, it's actually this GitHub page. So um, I, I can't pull it up here, but go, go to a github.com slash something that doesn't exist. Find a 404 page. This 404 message here has a kind of parallax effect. You move your mouse around, and everything, it's almost like you're looking behind the little dude. You kind of get to see. Everything kind of shifts as you move your mouse. jQuery. And they, outsource, uh, they open sourced the, the library. So you guys can put this effect on your own website. And then one of their developers went, went a step even further, and he integrated this with the accelerometer in iPhones and iPads. So as you move your, your iDevice, everything shifts and you get to see behind things. Really cool. And it's like three lines of code. All you do is you break these. If you go to these links at the bottom, these are the individual images that make up this, this thing. And basically, there's one kind of rectangular one, which is just the background. And then each of the others are just little sprites that just get positioned over the top. And then you add a jQuery um, method on top of them, and they move. It's brilliant. Code is content. Build cool stuff, give it away, get links. or Nick stuff other people have done, steal it. Obviously, it's not stealing, it's open source. Use it yourself, get links, etc. I've used this slide before. This is Fred Wilson, one of the investors in Etsy, deploying live code to Etsy.com. Crazy. Crazy. Who would let him do that? But they have this brilliant continuous um, deployment system that means they're continually monitoring all of the uh, variables about their website. So, not only kind of code errors and web page errors like 404s or 500s, but also business level errors. So if they deploy a new version and they see conversions going down, not many people checking it, not as many people checking out, it will automatically roll back to the old version so they can fix it. Really cool. And as he put it, so simple a VC can do it. Now, I don't want to say anything uh, unfair, but if a VC can do it, an SEO can do it. And I think this is, this is one of the big things that, uh, that startups have as an advantage against the entrenched players, right? This is why somebody like Hipmunk, who don't yet rank for flight searches, totally could own that space because they can do this kind of thing really fast. Their SEO, in principle, could be right up there involved with the deployment process. So, so push for that. To your developers and sysadmins, I'm very sorry. We're going to learn a little bit from big budgets. Um, it, it's always a, a kind of interesting point to, to look at big budgets because some people sit there going, yeah, well, it's easy if you've got millions of dollars. Um, but I think there are things that we can learn. And I, I already talked about the, well, so the irreverence of Paddy Power. We saw the, the brand-led stuff from guys like T-Mobile and Orange who don't even put their logo on their advertising. Um, we've got, uh, this is one of my favorites. This is, so there's a, a website in the UK called comparethemarket.com. That it's a car insurance compa price comparison affiliate website. They launched a TV advertising campaign, integrated with online, really clever, huge budget. They launched a website and a whole big functioning website called comparethemeerkat.com. All with this dude who's called Alexander Olof, uh, the meerkat. And it was just really well done. And this kind of stuff happens all the time. They, they just, they nailed it. They did everything right. And it really worked. So the, I don't know how well you can see this, but the, this is a Google Trends chart. The top blue line is their biggest competitor, long established big competitor, moneysupermarket.com. The red line is comparethemarket.com. You can see them launch in 2007, kind of, start probably TV advertising in 2008. Uh, and then, oh, what goes on here? This is the orange line, is searches for compare the meerkat. And you can see it was obviously just around Christmas 2008. Big spike, but more significantly, uh, as I'm sure Avinash would care about, the red line overtaking the blue line within a year. They just owned this marketplace. And it was, it's fascinating to, to dissect something like this and to say, actually, they did so many things right. It started pervading all kinds of popular culture. People started sponsoring meerkats in zoos. Seriously. Uh, my um, my brother-in-law was um, was in Afghanistan at the time. He was serving in Afghanistan, and he ended up with a grow your own meerkat. This is this is taken uh, in a, um, a, a UK Air Force base in Afghanistan where he's growing a meerkat. That's some crazy advertising, 
right, that, that can do that. Have you seen these things, like little plastic stuff, you put it in water and it kind of grows. Yeah, kids love it. Um, I, I, it's just so much fun. Do not drink. Growing a meerkat. Warning, science in progress. But you can, of course, do cheap. You don't have to spend millions of dollars on TV advertising and outdoor and all that kind of stuff. There was a, you can get links and shares with just pure text. This is, uh, you know, it's a tumble blog. It's not, it's got no pictures in it. It's got no photos. It's just copy. I shared this. Rand shared this. You should all read this. Anybody who wants to go into space when they were a kid? Who doesn't want to go into space? I mean, come on. Uh, this is a, um, well, it, it was brought back out. It, it, it was previously written by Penn and Teller, and it, and it came out uh, around the time of the last space shuttle launch. And it'll make you cry. OK, um, and play games. So Rand had a load of stuff about the kind of um, the benefits of playing people off against each other. I've just got some examples. Heard of what, world, world of Warcraft? This got Tom, my brother, into Foursquare, finally, because he moved to New York recently to open our New York office, and he has immediately become a Brooklyn hipster. And um, you basically you log in here with your, your Foursquare ID, and you, you register for a team. So you register for Brooklyn or Manhattan or Queens. And then whenever you check in somewhere, it kind of counts that as a, a, a point in the, in the kind of world of Foursquare. And you can kind of see, I don't know how well you, you can see this actually, but this, is, this area here is kind of downtown Manhattan, and you can see the purple of Brooklyn kind of just edging into down, downtown Manhattan. And Manhattan's kind of fighting back just at this, uh, this kind of northwest corner of Brooklyn here. Yeah, game stuff, competition, pitting people against each other, putting them in teams, giving them something to uh, say, I belong here, and they'll share it like crazy. And connect it with the real world, because that's where most people spend most of their time. This is uh, Street Spark, which I don't actually like the way it's designed at the moment, but I think it could be really cool. Takes all of your social networks and looks for people nearby who are doing similar stuff and starts connecting the dots. And this could be a little creepy, but if, you know, if you're opting into it all, I think this could be really cool. Leaderboards, we, we, we kind of talked about. Um, oh, right. Uh, I'm, I'm cheating again. Next slide has a URL on it, which will take you to a open, public, editable Google Docs spreadsheet which has about 23 or 24 Spotify invite codes. Um, uh, it, it's publicly editable, editable, so don't be a dick. Just take one. Take one, delete it so that everybody knows it's gone. And uh, yeah, you know, there you go. You're welcome. Uh, so dis.tl slash Spotify invites. It's rude, but there you go. Um, but embrace scarcity. This was what Rand was talking about. And embrace anticipation. People have been talking about how Spotify was coming to the US for weeks and months before it finally got here. And it was, I mean, they almost left it too long, I think. You know, it, they kind of, be, it had been building up for so long that people were like, dude, I'm just gonna stop listening to music if you don't roll out soon. <laughs> uh, discuss, I, I think that's how you pronounce it. I assume that's how you pronounce it. I just love the fact that they've embedded social right in the, in the platform. The app replies in, in blog comments. This is pretty much the only reason why I would think that you would use a third party commenting service on, on your website is that it, reaches a bigger social network. And this emails you. If, you, if somebody at replies you in a discuss comment, you get emailed to say, hey, the conversation is still going on. You might want to uh, go hang out over there. This has no connection to anything, except that discuss is a kind of silly URL, and Fiverr is a kind of silly URL. Uh, it's F-I-V-E-R-R.com. You should check it out. You should put your link bait budget into it. Because this is, what will people do for $5? And the answer is, almost anything. Seriously. So this guy will write anything you want on his stomach and dance for 30 seconds for five bucks. I nearly got Rand one of these, actually. Um, th this is how I got Tom his, his Christmas present last year. I just spent a bunch of stuff on Fiverr and was like, here's some funny shit. Uh, <laughs> I'm a good brother like that. What can I say? Um, I, I particularly like this one. This guy will make hard decisions for you for five dollars. <laughs> I'm kind of tempted to go on, on Fiverr and say, for $5, I will tell you not to make hard decisions by paying somebody $5. Yeah, anyway. Um, back to other stuff. I'm going to have to whiz through these. I'm going to run out of time. This is a clever use of mobile. Um, this is a, I'm sure none of you will have seen this. This is a interactive billboard in Stockholm. And you can play Pong on the interactive billboard on your iPhone. Crazy. They've got like people in the square playing against each other. I don't know how it works. I don't know how you log in. I have no idea. But, you know, crazy, crazy. 
Uh, this is an example of playing to your target market. This is an advert for what we call in the UK Lynx. I believe it's called Axe over here, a deodorant that's pretty much targeted at teenage boys. At least it is in the UK. I assume it is everywhere else. Uh, so this advert runs in print, and it says, go to our mobile website to complete the ad. Of course the kids are going to do that, right? And, um, but then they've been to the website. You can get them to create an account or whatever, you know, share it, tweet it, et cetera. Whilst we're on the topic of tweeting, this is a, the Twitter account of Betfair Poker, who in the UK, so this is a poker company, they basically just take the piss out of companies that have social media um, strategies, I guess. And they don't really talk about poker. They just, um, they just kind of pretend they've been having meetings about their social media strategy and tweet about them. Um, which, I, which I think is just brilliant. And I, I like it a lot. Um, and and there's the, they have all these kind of personas. So Grimes is the boss, and he's kind of not really getting it. And he's like, when are you going to start talking about poker? And uh, you know, we're, no, we're taking a soft, soft approach. We're just you know, building engagement and you know, all that kind of shit. Uh, and he's like, I want to put it on their heads with lasers. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, jump on new social stuff, because I think there's always a increased reward in the early days. So when new features roll out, or I, I think there's big opportunities with Google Plus right now because you can get in on the ground floor. This is a very cool one when Facebook rolled out the ability to tag yourself in images. This is a, uh, a marketing campaign put together by IKEA who took these photos um, of showroom uh, things and said, be the first to tag any item in this photo as you and get that item for free. Okay. Simple, nice, okay, I kind of, kind of get it. So people are like tagging the bed as them or tagging the bedside table as them, which is a little weird, but until you realize that every time you tag yourself, it puts something in your newsfeed saying, Will Critchlow just tagged himself in this photo. So everybody goes, oh, well, I wonder what that photo is. And they click through and it says, tag yourself in this photo to, get the, um, to win something. This went crazy, crazy. And they, they were, it just, I'm sure it's against Facebook's terms of service, but they did it early before there were any spam detection controls or all that kind of stuff. So anybody remember Moonfruit that just kind of almost ruined Twitter with the first uh, MacBook giveaway, tweet the hashtag, that kind of stuff? Get in early. Um, I have like six minutes left, and I'm not onto the second half of my presentation yet. I'm going to have to go fast. So TED Talks, awesome. Presentations, video. Uh, photos, also awesome. Underrated. This is a self-portrait taken by a monkey. What? Self-portrait, taken by a monkey. This is serious journalism. <laughs> this appeared on the Daily Mail. Uh, you guys heard the Daily Mail? They're a UK newspaper. You have completely the wrong idea about the Daily Mail. You know them as self-portraits of monkeys. Link bait, internet friendly. Actually, rants about immigrants and terrorists. Uh, not, 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 nice, not nice news. Um, but they killed the online strategy. You're probably all familiar with the Boston Globe, uh, you know, the big picture. But they, so they have these kind of huge photojournalism articles. Well, I didn't realize quite how big they are. This is one article that goes on and on and on and on and freaking on. And that's not even the bottom. And then there's comments. Go over the top. I think that's a lesson there. Tipex uh, is a brand, um, what, what do you guys call this stuff? Wide out. OK. So uh, this looks like a YouTube ad. But actually, it's a YouTube takeover. The whole thing is, a, is one big flash thing. So you can see the guy reaching out of the YouTube video. He picks up the thing and erases shoots. So it says, a hunter something, a bear. And then you can type in the something. And yes, whoever that was with the filthy mind down here, uh, <laughs> yes, you can type in anything you like. And it, this is another example of building links with developers, because they made it work really well, and it was kind of almost safe for work, depending on where you work. I mean, it was fine at Distilled. Uh, pretty much anything is fine at Distilled. Um, and it just took you to different videos of this guy, you know, punching a bear, wrestling a bear, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yes, and all the other stuff. Um, OK, so that's the first half out of the way. I have four minutes to do the second half. Let's go. We have a swipe file at Distilled. You guys should all have swipe files. We use Digo. It has private groups. You can um, share stuff with your coworkers. We tag things like we have a, a one swipe file of infographics. We have swipe files of design. We have swipe files of all kinds of stuff. Uh, this is a sample of our infographic swipe file. Um, and you can download it. I've given it away. That's kind of cool. Uh, probably shouldn't have done that. Didn't tell the people who are putting it together. Yeah. Um, you can steal shit from other countries. 
uh, you know, as one colonial empire to another colonial empire. Um, tra translate words like infographic. Uh, translate your keyword. Head over to Google and uh, do a search for that thing. In Chrome, Google will automatically ask if you'd like to translate this. You're like, hell yeah. Um, then, is it cheating to use Rand's own tool against him? I guess not. Uh, turn on your Moz bar, quickly scan down the list, see what got widely shared, especially now with the new OSE stuff. It's not just links, it's all the kind of um, social shares and that kind of stuff. Then, you know, you can be much more shameless about stealing stuff from other countries because obviously, I'm, and I'm not, I attribute the source, link back to them, you know, say you did this, but it's much less derivative because you're actually adding real value by taking something that's been done in one language and, and redoing it in another. Um, you can also do this with old stuff. If you, if you come across in your industry people who did something really cool in 2009, you can do the updated version, go back to everybody who linked to the original one. I mean, that's not rocket science, but I just thought I'd mention it. Uh, Justin Briggs sat right down the front here from Distilled. Round of applause for Justin Briggs. Kicks ass. <laughs> Check out the guest post he wrote on Outspoken Media. Um, about how to do outreach once you're doing all this kind of stuff. So this kind of goes hand in hand with the stuff Kate was talking about, about how to have the cool stuff to do outreach about. Justin, expert on the outreach side of things. Um, and scroll down to the bottom, and in the comments, Justin wrote, the best thing I've seen on the internet recently. This is a step-by-step -step how to, in reply to somebody who said, I can't quite work out how to do this, step-by-step. -step. Here's this person who I think might be interested in this thing. And here's where she writes. And here's what she's interested in. And here's how you contact her. And here's if you put this. She's got to link to this stuff. Are you kidding me? Read that comment. Tableau Public, really easy way of making uh, data visualizations interactive. Check it out. Play with it. Uh, we've talked about this already, the UX pattern. Scroll to the bottom of an OK Cupid story and get the little drop down thing um, that, uh, that asks you to share it. Also pops up the social sharing things. You see that they weren't there. And then they are. Um, so it kind of, the, the social reinforcement, you know, thousands of other people have shared this, all that kind of stuff. Much more subtle way, this also happens on Business Insider and the New York Times. This slides out the bottom. Uh, and I actually am a complete sucker for this. If I go to Business Insider and, and I get to the end of an article, I love it and, because it's always relevant and interesting, which means I think there's this powered by this company called Sail Through. I think if you're in content, you should definitely check them out. I, I have no, I've never used them, but just judging from the fact that I always click on that shit. Um, you can reward sharing. This is not as bad as rewarding people for linking to you at the moment, it seems. Uh, um, and this is a tip that I gave away, or an idea that I gave away um, previously, but I just thought it was one of those things that, that it might be relevant to some people in the room. You might not have heard it. You can just steal it and you can use it. If you have a website where other people create your content, such as a jobs board, so people are creating jobs listings, and you have a search function, which is the primary way that people find those things on your site, like a job board. People come to the site, they search for the jobs. They find jobs that were written by other people. How do you sort those things? Well, you know, relevance and all that kind of stuff. Well, we know a little bit about search, right? You remember that little patent that um, Google came up with, the page rank thing, about links kind of being useful? What if you sorted your search results by the things that you would like your site to acquire. So what if you made your internal search algorithm say, if I find a result on my own site that has way more links than all the other results on my site, I'm going to rate that higher. Right? I'm going to rank that higher. That is completely legit. Right? It's how Google works. But then you tell all the people who are uploading content to your site that that's how you order things in your search results. <laughs> so it turns out, right, I, you, you remember Matt Clayton, Mixcloud, did the Facebook thing? I told him this, and I was like, you can do this with shares as well. It doesn't just have to be links. You can do this with shares. And he was like, we already do this with shares. Are you kidding me? This is one of the best signals we have for ranking stuff. I was like, well, you should tell your users that then. Right? If, you know, like all these DJs who are uploading mixes, tell them that if they tweet their stuff and they Facebook share it and their fans and their friends Facebook share it and tweet it, it will rank higher on Mixcloud search. Tell them that. You crazy? Yeah. Okay, there's some implementation details. And I haven't got time. Uh, that's me. Uh, before we completely wrap up, I'm going out to another video. This is uh, 
Alexander Orlov from Compare the Meerkat. Hopefully. I am Alexander, founder of CompareTheMeerkat.com, where we compare markets. Wow, meerkats. Meerkats. Oh, cut, cut, cut the I am Alexander, founder of CompareTheMarket.com. Meerkat. It's meerkat. Oh. I, oh, oh, I hit myself in the, ow. Je Alexander. As Navapa, la vrajnik. Oh, so, English. I forget. I forget. Sorry, sorry. I forget in English. Oh, oh, bouncy. I cannot find you. Ciao, cheap. Uh. I cannot find you, cheap curry. Oh, that's <laughs> not funny. <laughs> A bold man. He falls over. It's a good story. But lately, we get many people looking for cheap car insurance. People looking for. <laughs> Don't mind that. <laughs> Sergey is having little joke with me <laughs> again. So, just two little quick things to wrap that up. One, they've done all this brilliant TV advertising. This is online only. Brilliant way of wrapping the whole thing up. Uh, secondly, because you might not, obviously, you'd have no reason to realise when he talks about the the fat man, he fall down. Funny. That's taking the piss out of one of their competitors, whose similar character is this fat Italian guy called G Giovanni Compario or something like that, Gio Compario, um, who, who, which was like a, a, another company just trying to do the same thing, but not quite as well. But anyway, I've been Will Critchlow. Thank you. Two excellent presentations. Whoever wins, we all won at stake a very expensive dinner, and a nation's pride. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I think we honestly have so many English people in this room. OK, so, yes. yeah, that gets this corner's vote. Yes, anyway, yes. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to do this by a show of hands. Yeah. By a show of hands. And I believe since Rand presented first, we will go Rand first. So make your decision now in your mind. Close your eyes. Think very hard. Oh. Sure. Oh dear. Oh dear. Better turn around, face the screen. Okay. You only get to vote once. We're gonna do it. Could I have two independent? Could I get Justin Briggs and Joanna Lord up here to help me judge? One, one from Distilled, one from SEO Moz. Okay. I always liked you, Joanna. <laughs> and this is it. You've made your decision. If you're voting for Rand, if he gave the better presentation, raise your hand now. One, two. Oh. <laughs> what does that mean? We, got a, we have a mental picture of that, guys? OK, hands down. If you thought Will Critchlow gave the better presentation and should win this event, raise your hand now. What does that mean? <laughs> okay, just a second. Let's confer with my partners here. This is very close. It might be too close to call. We have to have a revote, folks. I'm sorry, that was too close to call. No, no, no. So just make them, just make everybody stand up. Go to one side of the room, one side of the room. Oh, stand up. Okay. St all okay. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys turn back around. That's how we. That's how we broke the tie in London. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We have a tradition, apparently. Uh, <laughs> everybody, stand up. We're gonna. And if you like Rand. Go to this side, and if you like Will, go to this side of the room. It's not, it's not about if they like us. <laughs> if, you, if you like them on Facebook. And you went to Rand's. I went to Rand's. <laughs> you lied. Okay, everybody. 
Try to clear out of the aisle. Try to clear out of the aisle. Oh, gosh, guys. Cyrus, okay. did you tell them that I invited Avinash? <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, I'm going to... Look who I have on my side. Can we do it by links? I'm going to confer with the judges here. Just a moment. Let me turn off my microphone. Okay, it's a very tight race, but we have a unanimous, unanimous decision by our judges. The winner of this year's head-to-head -head by about 10 people, Mr. Rand Fishkin. Oh!